Hello Internet, I am Mihai, it is part 25. Today I will fix the failing pipeline. Remember, the last time our pipeline failed when it tried to run sudo. It is the sudo and here it asked for a password. I am going to fix it. Go to Jenkins dashboard and I want to create a new job. Click on new item. Enter the name test sudo command. I select freestyle project and I click OK. I am inside test sudo command. I want to add a parameter. I select choice parameter. The name will be sudo underscore command. And I will create three commands. It is systemctl, status, node.js, backend, app.service. Copy this line, paste it two times, write sudo, write sudo in the second line, and in the second line, write stop. In the third line, write start. The parameter is ready. Scroll down. In the build steps, I select execute shell. First, I want to print the username, so it is who am I. And in the second line, I want to run the command from the parameter. It is dollar sudo underscore command. It is the parameter name. I will just copy it, search for it, and here is the occurrence. Save. Very good. Build with parameters. Here I can select the command, and now I want to run the job to stop the service. Before I stop it, I want to make sure it is running. In the browser, go to the web server IP and the port number, refresh the page, and I see it is running. Let's run the job. Build, wait, and it failed. Let's check the logs. The username is Jenkins, and as you see, it asked for a password. Check if the service is running. Yes, it is running. Run the command to check the service status. Build with parameters. Systemctl status. Build. Refresh. And the status is green. And here is the status. Active running. I want to give to Jenkins user sudo privileges. For that, I want to log in into my Ubuntu server. Open the terminal. Write ssh, my username or your username, at the IP address. Enter, write the password, and I'm inside my Ubuntu server. Clear the terminal. Very good. Check the content of the file etc sudoers. This is the file. I want to run cat to check the content and I also want to use sudo to open the file. Enter, write the password and it is the file content. You can read it, I don't want to. The only thing I want to do is to find that this folder is included as directory. Go to that folder, it is cd etc sudoers.d Enter. I'm inside the folder. Check the content. And it contains only one file, README. You can read it. My goal is to create here a new file which will give sudo privileges to the Jenkins user. Let's start from the documentation. Open the configuration repository. It is this one. In the Jenkins server, create a new file. New file. It is add sudo privileges to 
Jenkins user dot md enter save it create the first header it is create a sudo file for Jenkins user very good create the shell block and the first thing which we did we entered the sudo's d folder I will copy this command, it is cd etc sudoersd, copy it, paste it. Now I want to create a new file, I will use sudo touch. The file name is jenkins-user-privileges. Very good, copy the line and I will use nano to modify the file. Perfect. Run the touch command, copy it, paste it, run, check the content of the folder. Here is the file and the owner is root. Let's modify it. Copy the nano command. I copied, paste it, run it. Here is the file, I will modify it. But first, I want to create a template. In the configuration repository, in the resources folder, create a new file. It is Jenkins user sudo privileges. Enter. And here I will write the privileges. It will be Jenkins all equals all space no pass wd colon slash user slash bin slash system ctl stop node.js backend up dot service very good if you want to read more about what is Jenkins, all, no pass, D. I attached two links in the description about Visudo. You can read them after the video. But in short words, Jenkins is the username. All is the hostname. All is information how to run the command. No pass WD is to run with no password. And here the command which is allowed to run as sudo. It is the safe version. I want to make it more aggressive, so I will remove this thing and write all. It is not a good practice to give permission to all the commands, but to save time, I will use it. Save buff files and write the comment. Open Jenkins user privileges. It is this file name and copy the content from local resources slash the file name Jenkins user pseudo privileges close the bold style file and dot. The instruction is ready. Let's execute it. So, copy the content, paste it in the nano editor, shift insert, very good. Control O to write it, and Control X to exit. Perfect. Read the content, cut Jenkins user privileges. Here is the content. Now I want to modify the permission to the file and check if the file is correct. In the instructions, create a new header, apply sudo privileges, very good, sudo chmod 440, for means read for the user, the second for means read for the group, 
and the zero means no permissions for any other users and groups on the system. Now I write the file name Jenkins user privileges. Put it in the shell block. Nice. Copy the command. Paste it in the terminal. Check the file content. It is the file. The owner is root, the group is root, and the permissions is only read, read, and nothing. Write the last command. It is sudo vsudo check. Copy the command, paste it in the terminal, and it will check if all the files in sudoRSD are written correctly. Run it. I see that sudoRS parsed OK, readme parsed OK, Jenkins user privileges parsed OK. If you have some error or mistake, you must fix the error before continue. Let's check the Jenkins job to see if our permission works. Go to the browser, check if the service is still running. Yes, it is still running. Run the test sudo command, build with parameters, check the status, it must be running. The username is Jenkins and the server is running, active. Stop it. sudo systemctl stop and now it should work. It finished successfully. Open it. The user is Jenkins. The command stop worked and the status is success. Check if the service is running. Refresh the page and it is not running. Check the status. Systemctl status. Open the logs. It failed because the service is inactive, dead. Run the service, build with parameters, sudo systemctl start, build. It is success, service is running. Yes, it is running for five seconds. Check the status and it will be running. Perfect, it is active. Let's commit and push the files. Go to git changes. Check the changes. I created a new file. Check the changes again. Here I also created the file. Close the changes. And write the commit message created. sudo privileges. New line, add sudo privileges to Jenkins user. Commit and push. Good job. Okay, now let's modify the pipeline shared library repository because we want the Jenkins pipeline to check if the service is running or not. In the VARS folder, open call system D service. This is this one. And here create a new private method. Private void underscore assert service status. Pass the systemd service. It is systemd service, comma, and pass the expected status. Open the body. Here, create a switch block. Switch for the expected status. Create the default case. It will throw an error that the expected status is not supported. Expected status. Dollar sign expected status not supported. Very good. And now create the case stopped. Colon. Write the break 
to stop the execution after the case logic is done. Here create an if statement. Also create the else block. That's good. Now I go to the class systemd service in the OS folder. Here I want to create a new method. It will be public boolean is service active. It will return as default false. And now I write the logic. First, I want to call the shell script. So I will use the deployment configs dot job instance dot sh. For the script, I will write systemctl is dash active service name. And now I need to skip the error. Remember, in the test job, when we checked the status of an inactive service, the pipeline failed because the system CTL returned an error. I need to handle this error. One good way to do it is to write two pipes for OR and return true in case the system CTL fails. I also want to return the standard output return std out it is true and also i will write the label which will be is in double quotes of course is system d service active nice I want to save the output into a variable, so it will be final string service active string equals, I will zoom out, and it is the entire command, very big, but you will handle it. Zoom in a bit to see it better. In the new line, print the service active string deployment configs, job instance, echo, service active string, very good. Now I want to check for a condition. If the retard value is equal to active, it means the service is active. So I have to retard true. Also, I know that this command systemctl is active will return always a new line at the end of the string. So I want to remove that new line. I will use for that trim. It is it. The command is ready. Is service active? Go back to the Groovy script. Here in the if statement, write system d service with small s like this dot is service active. So if the service is active, I want to throw an error. It will be systemd service. Write its name. It is systemd service dot service name is not stopped. And if the condition is false, it means the service is stopped. So I will just print an information that the system D service, system D service dot service name is stopped. Very good. I found a mistake. It must be service. It's better now. Scroll up sleep for five seconds
And now call the assert service status. I need to sleep 5 seconds after I stopped the service just in case if the service doesn't stop immediately. I need to pass two variables. First one will be the systemd service from the line 9. Copy the name, passed it. And the second variable will be the expected status. We expect it to be stopped. Copy the value, passed it. And the stop case is ready. Check git changes. I added the sleep and calling the assert. Apply. Here I created the big method to assert service status. It is OK. Apply it. Open the class. Here I created the big method is service active. Let's scroll right to check if it is OK. It's good. Now write the commit message. It will be asserted. Systemd service status. New line add ludo privileges to Jenkins user. Very good. Commit and push. It was pushed. I cannot wait anymore to run the pipeline. So go to Jenkins. Go to the pipeline. I better open it in a new tab. Here is the test sudo command. Here I will open the pipeline. Build with parameters. Branch name is main. And now build. While it is building, I will check that the service is running. Wait for the pipeline to finish. It finished. The service should be stopped. Yes, it is stopped. Check the logs. Scroll down. Till the end. Nice. Here I call sudo systemtctl stop. I sleep for five seconds. I check if the service is active. It showed me the true. It means the is active command failed, but the pipeline didn't fail. And the status is inactive. So the information log was that the systemd service is stopped. Pipeline status is success. I want to run the pipeline one more time and make it fail. Remember, we have an error in the line 27. If the is service active, the pipeline will fail. So I will cause it to fail. Open the pipeline. Build with parameters. Don't run it. Open the test sudo command. Build with parameters. Select here start. Don't run it. And I will do one thing very fast. Before I run everything, I check that the service is stopped. I need to run it. Now it is running. Prepare the command. Start. It is ready. The service is running. I run the deployment pipeline. I refresh the page many times. And when it will be in the stage stop Node.js backend up service, I will start the service. So the service is stopped. I run it. The service is running. I check the pipeline and it failed. Let's go to the logs. Here it stopped the service, but remember I started it very fast while it was sleeping. Jenkins checked if the service is active. It was active. And Jenkins threw the error. Systemd service is not stopped. That is the line 27. The pipeline status is failure. I will check if the service is running. And it is running. Run the pipeline one more time to stop the service. And it will be all. Wait for it.
the pipeline finished, the service is stopped, I will check the status. Open the logs, I see the service is inactive, and it is all I wanted to show. Open the diagram, make the stage white, and it is all. Your pipeline can stop the systemd service. Again, I want to ask you to support me. If you like the video, if you think it is a good learning material and it helps you, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let's make my tutorial more popular. Thank you for watching.